So my name is John Oberheide and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, uh, antique exploitation and uh, to give you guys an idea of what this presentation is about so that you guys can leave last minute if you want to. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and his various escapades across uh, cinema. So if you guys aren't interested in uh, old systems like uh, Windows 3.11 for work groups uh, and you're not interested in uh, a presentation for shits and giggles then you can go learn something uh, from a useful presentation, maybe go see Dan Kaminsky's uh, talk on track one. But it looks like everyone is staying, so you're either asleep or you're very interested. Uh, so again, this, this disclaimer before we get started here, um, this whole presentation is essentially me complaining about myself making this presentation. Uh, I've made this entire deck in paintbrush, which is not even as, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's not even as capable as MS Paint. It's, it's pre-MS Paint. It's uh, you know, the MS Paint that came with uh, Windows 3.1. And I thought it would be a nice novelty to actually make the deck in the same program and platform that I was exploiting. Um, so it, it, it's a little rough. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it actually doesn't look too bad, I think. I think I did a good job. So we're going to be talking about some, some old systems that uh, you probably don't care about, but that actually is surprisingly uh, still in use. Um, and just to, to start off, the, the premise of this presentation is similar to the uh, movie Terminators, where a machine or um, uh, something is, is sent back in time to eliminate uh, a target. And we are going to be doing the same thing, traveling back in time to uh, eliminate the target, except in our case, the target is not John Connor or Sarah Connor or whoever. It is um, an older systems platform, um, which is uh, related to uh, this movie, uh, another... Uh, of Arnold's escapades called Junior, which uh, was released back in 1994. And this movie is really a, a crime against uh, humanity. Um, it's an abomination of, uh, of cinema. And we have to go back in time to destroy it. Um, there actually was a, a, a essay contest I saw when I was making this slide deck about Junior. It's like juniorbestmovieever.com. They held a contest to uh, see who could write an essay about why Junior was the best movie of all time. And since this is like an absurd idea in the first place, it got all sorts of national press coverage, and yet they still did not get enough uh, submissions to even cover the, the number of prizes they were giving out. <laughs> so it's, it's very obvious that you know, this, this movie just, it, you can't even try to write about why it's the best movie of all time. But we're gonna go back to, to 1994 when this was uh, made and try to stop it from being uh, made or released. Uh, so to give a couple, little bit of context to you guys who don't remember that far back, uh, 1994 was when O.J. Uh, got away with murder, literally. Uh, it was when Nas dropped the Illmatic album, the best hip-hop album of all time. It was also, uh, this is, I just heard this yesterday, but uh, I heard that uh, Spencer Pratt actually was uh, rumored to invent return-oriented program back in 1994. So, you know, rap just keeps getting further and further back. People are claiming that they came up with it, but I heard that uh, Spencer Pratt actually did. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and, of course, in 1994, Windows 3.11 was released. Uh, this is actually a lie. It was released December 31st, 1993, but uh, it's close enough to 1994, so we're going to call it that. So, Windows 3.11 is our attack target. Uh, we're under the assumption that this movie, Junior, was made using Windows 3.1 workstations, which is probably also incorrect. But for the sake of the story, we're going to assume that. Windows 3.11 was a 16-bit operating system, um, but there were some sort of hacks uh, on top of it, Windows uh, 32S, um, and also the Windows uh, 16 enhanced, or enhanced mode, which if you had a 32-bit CPU uh, running in protected mode, you'd have 32-bit uh, memory addressing. And also the uh, good old Windows for workgroups 3.11 was one of the first times that uh, TCP IP was introduced uh, via the, the WinSock interface. So, you know, it was, a, it was a spectacular release, and uh, everyone still uses it on their laptops today. At least I do. So, you know, looking at what we would do uh, if we actually were in the situation and we were going back in time, you know, what sort of tools would we use to exploit this platform? Uh, if you remember the Terminator movie, I think when everyone gets sent back in time, they show up naked. Uh, so you can't really carry any sort of software tools uh, on your person when you're going back in time. So. You know, we kind of have to uh, deal with what we have in that era. Um, obviously, it was post ENIAC era, but um, some of the tools seem like they were written for the, the ENIAC. 
Um, obviously, if we're looking at, at debuggers, we would like to launch up our, our IDA Pro as usual. Um, that's not going to happen. Uh, instead, we're stuck with these uh, two abominations, uh, Borderland Turbo Debugger, which has its like you know pseudo end curses interface, as well as Soft Ice, which was uh, a great program that um, you know these were really the only um, uh, debuggers that were available for the Windows uh, 3.x platform. Um, so we're, we're kind of we're kind of hamstringed by by that, or at least it makes it a little more complicated um, to to. Uh, uh, look at some of these crashes that we'll get to. Uh, second, uh, you know, if you pull a, a Win311 uh, executable off uh, whatever image you have, and you want to start poking around at it, and you pull up things like PE file, which is a, a you know Python extension to look at uh, PE uh, format executables, or you know something like PE Explorer, which is a nice little GUI thing, which will show you like the IAT and EAT and um, all the sections of the PE file. Um, they will barf on these files, uh, mostly because they're not PE files. The executables used on Windows 3.x are called NE, um, which ironically uh, was called new executable. It was it was new at the time, um, but obviously it's not so new anymore. Uh, and this was the executable format for uh, Windows 3.x. Uh, sort of in between these uh, stages here, the the MZ format was you know the DOS executable format uh, invented by uh, Mark Z from Microsoft. I don't know his last name. Zibikowski, thank you. I'll drink for that. Every time you say Zibikowski, I'll drink. Um, it's turning the summer count again. So uh, you know, NE was sort of this this uh, evolution in the middle between MZ and PE. Um, it had some backwards compatibility with uh, MZ. If you see at the top there, there's a, a old style file header, which was the old MZ MS DOS header. Um, which didn't allow it to interoperate uh, with backward compatibility, but at least allowed it to output an error message. Um, so that when DOS tried to load a NE uh, executable, it would spit out an error message, the one you've probably seen, like, you know, this requires a Windows environment to execute. Um, but if the was running in a Windows environment, the Windows loader would know to look uh, for the, uh, 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 the new uh, header pointed to um, in that diagram there. And this was a you know pretty standard uh, segmented executable layout where you have the bottom of the picture is cut off, but you segment one, and then da 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 through segment n for your data and code and whatnot. So uh, looking at you know what tools we would use for vulnerability discovery, of course, if we're going to be uh, fuzzing our target, which in this case is the paintbrush application, uh, we would use any number of fuzzing frameworks out there, like Sully or the uh, BFF from CERT or uh, Peach, the popular uh, Python fuzzing framework. Um, but since we can't actually use these tools, we can't bring them back in time with us, we're going to have to stick with uh, what we can do. So taking another uh, note from Arnold's uh, cinematic history, in the movie Predator, after he loses all his advanced weaponry, he's forced to fight the Predator with, you know, sort of sticks and stones where he coats himself with mud and, you know, starts making traps and spears out of sticks. Uh, so we have to do the same thing, except that in our case, the sticks are Fortran. So, thank you, thank you. This is the first and last Fortran present or program I will ever write. Uh, <laughs> I had no experience in Fortran uh, before doing this, and it was a horrible, horrible experience. Um, this code looks like it's somewhat nice, but it's really a nightmare. Um, what this is is a simple uh, byte mutation fuzzer. It takes the input file, um, randomly uh, changes one byte of a, a random offset. In the output file, and uh, obviously has some training harness to uh, uh, run and, and, and look for uh, uh, crashes. So in, in our case, um, since we were fuzzing the paintbrush application, uh, we took some couple you know standard bitmap files, which is a pretty simple file format, um, and started you know spitting them through uh, through this fuzz.f90, which I, I believe this is all valid uh, f94 trans, so it fits into our our theme of. Uh, 1994. Um, I'm sure I could have done it in C, but that wouldn't be as painful, so it wouldn't have been as funny for you guys. <laughs> so, of course, with any sort of uh, um, any sort of uh, fuzzing uh, run, the hardest thing is triaging all these samples. Um, you know, normally you have tools like uh, Bang Exploitable from Microsoft or Crash Langler on uh, OS 10. You have some sort of you know ability to automate this process somewhat. Um, unfortunately, in this case, you don't. So I had to, you know, dive into my uh, Windows 3.11 VM 
uh, which amazingly still does run uh, within VMware Workstation if you have it. Um, and you know, manually triage through all these samples to look at you know what type of crashes they were, uh, if they're like you know divide by zeros or general protection faults, um, and try to uh, triage these a little bit so that I wouldn't have to do so much uh, effort. But you know, this this uh, Borderland uh, debugger is not the greatest tool on earth, so it definitely was a, a painful process. Um, but you know, there is obviously some evidence of, of memory corruption here, and. Uh, and it, it turned out some of these uh, uh, fuzz samples were trivially exploitable. Um, they're simple, you know, stack buffer overruns, which give us uh, uh, execution flow control. Um, some of the things you have to keep in mind, though, when you're actually um, ex or exploiting uh, Windows 16 as opposed to Win32, uh, if you're doing the traditional popping your your calc.exe and you want to use your uh, create process, create process doesn't actually exist in Win32. Or in Win16, it was introduced in Win32, um, but we can use uh, shell execute to uh, uh, pop the 16-bit uh, calcs. Um, another sort of uh, side effect of the uh, Win30 or Win16 Win uh, memory architecture is that there's this lack of isolation uh, between processes. So if you hose one application, uh, your entire system goes down. So you know, actually going through these crashes was just absolutely, absolutely ridiculously painful. So. We successfully eliminated the target by um, exploiting our, our uh, uh, MS Paint. Uh, I think they might have been designing the movie in MS Paint, or Paintbrush, I should say. Maybe it was like a flipbook style, kind of like uh, uh, my presentation here. Um, so we, we've removed that from uh, the, the past history, and no one else will have the, that burned into their retinas in, anymore in the future. Um, thank you, thank you. Some other random bits. Uh, I, I submitted some of, this, uh, uh, some of these vulnerabilities to ZDI. I wanted to cash in on these, you know, extremely high severity vulnerabilities that I think should go for at least 100k. I mean, considering considering how valuable they are, and considering how often, you know, we everyone runs a paintbrush on their their Win uh, 3.1 uh, platform. And not only did I want 100k, but I also wanted the interest in inflation since 1994 because that obviously makes sense. The vulnerabilities were discovered when I was back in time, so you know that that interest should be adding up and. Uh, inflating my payout. Um, and the second question I have to ask for the developers at Microsoft, you know, what, what were you thinking? Why didn't you opt into DEP? I mean, you should have known that DEP was going to be created a decade later, and you definitely should have, you know, opt in permanent DEP set for a uh, PBrush, and you would have been set. None of this would have been an issue. Um, and I don't know if you guys, if you guys were at Black Hat, but uh, Microsoft actually released their, uh, geez, I don't even know what it stands for, exploit mitigation something toolkit. Um, version 2, which uh, you know, sort of allows you to go back and uh, change some of the uh, DEP opt-in or other uh, um, uh, exploit mitigation uh, mechanisms. Uh, so if you guys uh, download this, make sure it works on all of your 16-bit binaries, and if not, call Microsoft nonstop and complain about it, because I want, I want support to uh, protect my, my paintbrush app. So the only one serious slide I have in this entire presentation um, is about legacy systems. And if you guys caught uh, HD's presentation, I think at B-Sides, and potentially I think tomorrow at the uh, uh, Sky Talks as well, um, he was talking about VXWorks, which is a very popular uh, embedded platform, and some of the uh, vulnerabilities that are, are still around in that. And that, that came out previously, uh, previous to uh, uh, Windows 3, 3X as well. I think uh, VXWorks is from the mid 80s. Um, so you know these, these legacy systems tend to still be around. Uh, VXWorks obviously has a, a more significant footprint um, than Windows 3.1 and has uh, more implications in terms of the vulnerabilities that uh, HD uncovered. Um, but the theme is sort of the same, that you know, these systems are still out there. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of embedded systems actually do run uh, Windows 3.1. Um, a bunch also are you know, Windows CE and so on and XP embedded. Um, but it turns out that uh, Windows 3.1 was actually just recently end of life um, in November 2008, which I didn't know at the time, but again, when I was doing this presentation, I, I, I came upon this, and that, I thought that was uh, fairly surprising that they were not only uh, supporting this platform uh, all the way through the end of 2008, but also uh, still selling it. Um, so it, it indeed is, is very popular uh, for these embedded platforms. And uh, it's not, not likely that any of these are going to be running Paintbrush or any of the other uh, traditional applications that you would see on Windows 3.1 system. Um, but it's, it's something to keep in mind um, when you're looking at legacy systems and, and sort of going back and saying, hey, uh, what, what can we do with these systems that were around before we even were talking about um, the exploit techniques and the exploit mitigations that we talk about today at, at, at DEF CON and Black Hat? So with that, uh, I hope you guys